Do you know that sometimes we're all guilty of buying supplies we generally don't need, but we want to try out? And I bought, to me, in my opinion, the silliest brushes I've ever bought. And they are these dagger brushes. I'm going to go show you why I think it's so silly. Um, I've seen some videos where people have been using them. Maybe I got the longer ones that I shouldn't have got because they maybe should be a little bit shorter. But these guys are hilarious. Yes, hilarious. Sometimes you just buy silly brushes. Let's see what I do with them. I got the half inch dagger from Princeton and the 3 8 inch dagger from Princeton. This is the Neptune series. These brushes soak up a lot of water and a lot of paint, so you need to mix up a lot of paint. So I add a lot of water to this paint. You know, mixing it up and I'm playing around with the strokes and pushing down, lifting up, pushing down, lifting up. I kind of sped up the video because, you know, I think it'd be boring to see me constantly making strokes the whole time. But you see I'm twisting, turning, pulling, using the tip of it to just kind of maneuver it. And it's just very cumbersome, this big, 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 big brush. I could see the, you know, the value of it with the very extreme point in the end. So if you want to make some cute little pointy little marks like I did here, that's perfect for that. Um, also some decorative borders, you know, because you're making this fat and skinny, fat and skinny. Now I've got the 3 8 inch brush. A lot smaller, a little more manageable in my opinion. So I'm filling that up. And I'm going to play around the strokes in this one, see how I can manage this one. Yeah, a little, you know, again, like I said, you've got to grab a lot of water and a lot of paint. I think this one's a little more manageable for me than the half inch. The half inch would be if I had a huge piece of paper, but since I don't, I'm just playing around with this one. See, the scallop boy can be kind of fun. You get the skinny and long, you can do some nice whoosh, you know, lines. I'm just playing and playing and playing. That's the part that I love about watercolor and painting in general. Um, playing with the paint and the brush. See what happens on the paper, you know, when the paint collides with each other, how it looks. You could spend all day just kind of doing these silly, goofy strokes and whatnot. And it's very therapeutic, by the way. So if you have a very stressful day, I suggest to get out a paintbrush and some watercolor. So as you can see, the 3 8 inch brush had way more control than the one, excuse me, the half inch brush. This was just so goofy and so <laughs> ridiculous in the amount of like paint you needed to to wipe up and kind of maneuver. It would work great on a larger painting, I guess. And a smaller one, I would use this and probably a smaller, even smaller still dagger brush. I just find it very goofy. But I did do like a challenge, you see. Even though they're goofy, I probably won't use them every day. I can play with them and it's always good to play with them. I have this on this, I'm playing with this on this new paper also. Um, I'll, go, I'll talk about this another day, but um, I did like the point that it creates. Nice fine point. It's like a liner brush. So I'm not convinced that it's the best brush for for leaves. It's great for doing these fun little whooshes. You know, if you're going to do some decorative border work. But I'm going to challenge myself because I love a challenge. And let's see if I can actually create a floral because it is floral Friday um, with this brush and let's see if I can so here we go with the old try to make some fun flowers with this silly little dagger brush I, I would use the bigger one but it's so goofy I can't I'm gonna use the 3 8 inch one mix up some greens and I think I'll, I'll start to place the greens down first I'm mixing up and it's obviously because it's such a big 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 well here you're gonna have to use a lot of paint because it soaks it right up this belly of the brush is large but it holds a lot of paint so that's a good thing so it's got the nice point you can actually do something like almost like a tulip kind of leaf you know I might grab some of this bright green Just playing with putting in some stems and some leaves. Let's see what we've got. Got that pointy, pointy point. 
let's try and keep it a little bit simple here. Now I could try and make like a rose or a tulip. Let's see what we can do here. I've got some bright rose mixed with a little bit of yellow. It's going to be very cumbersome to try and make that shape because of that really curved in point with this brush. But let's, let's just try it. So we'll just kind of point it and kind of push it. Point it and push. Oh, look. A little pointy for my my uh, liking, but I'll make it work. <laughs> and I'll just keep grabbing some paint and kind of push that. Somewhat of a tulip, right? Grab a little bit of yellow, mix that in there. A little bit of goofiness. A simple little tulip will do. I'm gonna play around with some other flowers. I'll do another little one over here. Let's see. It's really like the goofiest brush, I swear to God. <laughs> you're pushing the weirdest way. You're going to have to get used to, if you have, I would use it for stems and leaves more than I would use it for a floral. It's my opinion. I'm struggling here. But you know, like I said, I love a challenge, so. I think it'd be great for like little, little spiky type flowers. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, same colors here. I go use this bright rose. So you get the nice pointy point. You're just making little spikes. This would be great. So corn flower, you know, something like that. You're just kind of making those little simple strike, st spiky strokes. Lifting up some of this paint It's very wet. So maybe even like a mum and then just bleed some ultramarine right in there. Maybe purple, kind of have fun. Just tap that right in there. So you can make a spiky, a spiky flower, right? <laughs> we'll play around with some more of those. Just these little spikes. Sometimes you gotta challenge yourself when you have brushes, so I might do some over here. I'm just making those little spiky spikes. So that seemed to work out with this brush. Obviously, the leaves and stems are easy to do with this brush. But the rest is, you know, you've got me baffled. I'm adding some ultramarine blue, and it's going to turn to purple. Right in here, just really bright, kind of goofy. Go back and mix up some greens again. Maybe a little bit brighter, a little pink. See, when you add the, I add the bright rose into that green, and it, you know, because red and green make brown, so it just really tones it down. Look at that, really spiky, skinny stems and leaves you can make. I'm just kind of playing, very abstract today. It's just fun to play. What will I make out of this? More just leaves and strokes. He's pushing down to its full capacity here. I'm adding some more water. It really needs a lot of water because the belly of the brush holds a lot of paint. Now I started off feeling very timid with the florals. Maybe I would have got it bigger, bolder with this brush, even this 3 8 inch brush. Again, you see me grabbing some more water. It requires a lot of paint on that belly. So I'm going to have to grab more water. Let's get some turk. I'm kind of playing around here. See, it's very kind of fun with a little point on the end these really kind of cool lines. Like I said, I'm a challenge girl. It took me forever to love Arsh paper, so maybe I'll like Dagger later on. So far not. <laughs> Two little strokes. Let's see what kind of leaves you can come up with. So far. Just kind of still kind of a little goofy for me. 
but I will not give up. And you can see the energy of the, the composition is going from the bottom right up into the top left. You have to figure out your composition energy. And mine's kind of varying that way. I'm kind of creating it to go that way. I don't want a thing going this way. I really want to push all the blooms and the stems this way. Keep adding. I'll add some more blooms in a second. Just gonna get my energy flow here with the greenery. It kind of helps ground where I'm gonna put my flowers next. So it's a little more goofy than I usually would paint. Here we got that ultramarine blue. But that's another challenge. It's always good to grow by changing the paper, adding some different brushes, changing your typical color pattern and your composition. See, now I've got my stem energy going this way. I'm gonna go back and add some blooms. I think I wanna add some more purple blooms. So I'm adding my ultramarine blue with my bright rose get some purple in here might just like make, make like little marks just simple push down they're like little skinny blooms here like I said this brush is going to be tricky for me and maybe the daggers that come up here are better I can go back into these blooms and add some purple in here too more ultramarine Blue. Playing around with this. Just making these little strokes. It makes these great little pointy lines. So I'll go back and add those in. Kind of use those lines to your advantage. Think of those fuzzy flowers. And it doesn't have to look like a specific flower. Again, I may go back in and add some blue ones. Just these little push down kind of blooms. Oh, these pink ones are kind of standing alone. They feel sad. <laughs> we'll add some more pinkish blooms. And my collar's got a little muddy. And this brush to mix is just not the brush to mix. It's very difficult. <laughs> you see, I'm struggling here. That's okay. That's part of the challenge. So I'm going to put some more of these kind of tulip looking blooms. It's very wet. And some of that red. I will not give up. It may not be like my most beautiful floral yet, but it certainly won't give up. I might add some more strokes. So you can add some nice pretty skating little lines inside these tulips with this little dagger on the end here. And let's put some more red kind of blooms in here. Some peeking in here. We need a bigger one also. Maybe I would make this a little bit bigger. As your eye kind of gravitates in that way. And then put something out here. I'm getting used to it, see? Again, not my favorite, but I like a challenge. It's always good to challenge yourself. Let me see, down here, maybe another one. Yeah, like I said, not my favorite but not the worst. It could be worse, guys. You could add, that's very wet, some little skinny lines on the outside of it. Get that bright pink go back in here. Some of the blooms looked a little small. I would even take some of this ultramarine blue in here. Kind of add that in the side for shadows just in the tip, 
tippy tip and on the stem get a little funky here so when you're starting out with a new brush it is a struggle for most people including myself you got to get the feel of it play around with it use your um, inexpensive paper you don't want to play around with this kind of paper some really dark greens. I put a little sprays there and I get dark kind of touching the bloom. Yeah, so this is what I've decided to kind of play around with. And there's another technique called glazing we'll talk about in another video. Kind of play around with that here a little bit. So when you're taking a color going across another color and it changes the color. So we've got this nice bluish green here. If I go across with the yellow, you see where it went across, it changed the color of all those stems and leaves. Same thing here. It's just going to change it. But let's, that's another video for another day. Okay, so I'm just going to finish this up a little bit. My goofy dagger brush <laughs> floral like I said it's not my favorite it's not my best but I do like a challenge and then I might go back and play around with this I could actually um, use my other brushes to play around with this it does make those nice beautiful skinny lines though I'll give you that if you're looking for those nice super skinny lines See, I'm doing those on the lines way out here, kind of going off, like scribble scribe lines. Kind of add some nice veins in some of these leaves. Which would be great for that. Little veins. And that's about it. I'll add, you know, like a little bit of touches to the tulips on the side here. Maybe a little bit in this little fuzzy flower. Again, grab the tulip. I just grabbed some ultramarine mixed in the pink. Just making these little dashed lines kind of like on, and kind of forming it around the tulip type shape. And throw a little yellow in there somewhere. A little yellow, kind of fuzzy. Maybe you can make some little yellow uh, daisy type flowers. Playing around with that. Let's see what we got here. I'm playing around with color. Just kind of tapping it around. You see that? Just tapping that yellow. Tippy tap. Tippy tap yellow. Tippy tap yellow green. All the fun things to do. And maybe I'll just for the last second of it add like a nice blushy color. You know, the coral blush color. Yeah. Playing around with color again. It's always fun. Like I said, I love a challenge. I want you guys to challenge yourself. Tell me what you think if you have one of these brushes, what your feeling is. Are you having difficulty? I'd love to hear from you. You see, I had difficulty as well. Try and make a petal flower is kind of tricky, you're kind of doing this movement. See that? I'll do one down here. Kind of wiggling it around. And it's not the easiest. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Like I said, this dagger brushes might be goofier ones than other people have gotten. Maybe they have a shorter point here. This one's just so silly. It's the silliest brush I've ever bought. And I'm not kidding when I say that. 
I don't say that lightly. I'm serious. <laughs> so this is my uh, dagger delight. That's what I'll call it. Floral. It's a little goofy, just like the just like this uh, brush. Why not? Add some more lines in here. Let's make it as goofy as goof. I, I can't see myself making a serious floor with this. And see, I'm grabbing some ultramarine just right out of the tube. See how much, look at that. You don't want to do black. You want to do some like blues. And look how much just adds like another little dimension to those flowers. And that's that. I think if I keep going, I'm gonna make myself crazy. You know, cornflower is perfect, perfect brush for this. And not so much my little petal flowers. No, not at all. But I will say it's kind of fun to do this little squiggly lines. You can play around with those for days. And there's the energy of this floral. Oh, we go up to the side for another day. <laughs> so that was the dagger brush. Here's the little one, here's the big one. The big one was just a little too much for me. Um, have you tried the dagger brush? Let me know your thoughts, um, what you think about them. Leave a comment below. Um, I'm always interested when people think about certain brushes and you know, certain brushes I like. I like to try new ones. Um, like I said, I've been seeing some videos of people talking about these, so I figured I gotta try them. Um, also, if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Yeah, so listen, guys, you gotta try new brushes. You gotta try paper, watercolor. Sticking to one thing all the time kind of keeps you in this little comfort zone niche and you kind of expand yourself so you can grow as an artist. It's the only way. I mean, you can't do the same thing all the time, right? It gets a little boring, monotonous. So yeah, I like to expand my horizons often. So I bought a bunch of new brushes. I have more that I bought that I didn't show you today and paper and a few more paint colors to try. So um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Take care and thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I appreciate you. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.